Battle of the Body Movement. It's election night. We're going to show you how the gestures politicians make could have a big impact on whether you believe them or not. When it comes to elections, do body gestures by politicians mean anything? You bet. Stefan Dion needs a better handshake. In our overall budget. Elizabeth May and Stephen Harper need to work on their gestures. And according to body language experts, Jack Layton should go to the barber. Basic tip is I'd give him a shave. You know, because, of course, if we can't see the lips fully, we think we're not getting all the information and therefore we don't trust it as much. The other thing is, tell me the last Democratic leader that had a moustache. Show me the handshake. Mark Bowden is a communications coach specializing in the messages that go beyond words. What's happening with the torso, the chest, how we're breathing, what's happening with the gestures, even the fingers, what's happening in the face, how's the mouth moving, the eyes, what are the eyebrows doing, what kind of images are we getting from the furrows in the brow, all of that kind of stuff. But you can have great content, but if you deliver in a boring, monotonous voice, nobody's going to listen to you. It's not what you say, it's what has been received. And a large part of how we receive them is through their body language. Three billion dollars a year dedicated to municipalities. Now she tends to gesticulate, but frequently she over gesticulates, and you'll see, and often the gestures are repetitive. The same gesture over and over again. If you stress every word in a sentence, or nothing becomes important because every word is stress. It's the same thing with a gesture. The non-verbal message is one of confusion. For politicians, hand gestures are really important. If you see here with May, she's being asymmetrical in her gestures, just using one side of her body at the moment. And that can look, you know, undecided. She just switched to the other side now. So which side is she on? We're not quite sure there. What's better for a politician is if they can use symmetrical gestures. There she is there using those symmetrical gestures, helps us focus in on the mouth as well. By drawing attention to the mouth, symmetrical gestures actually reinforce the verbal message. I'm not sure that's something that resonates with ordinary people. No, I can demonstrate this by, uh, if I cover my mouth here and you try and listen to what I'm saying, you'll find that it's harder, even when I raise my voice, and you become more comforted listening to me when you can see my lips. The more you're able to get your audience to see your mouth move, the more they'll understand you. Ordinary people understand we have to live within a budget. Yes, we so there we see him using really quite symmetrical gestures. In body language, you look for congruence. That is what the person says and what they show should match. When they don't match, we believe what we see over what we hear. <laughs> That's advice Stefan Dion might want to consider the next time he goes glad-handing. He doesn't look very comfortable uh, shaking hands. Again, we're seeing with the handshake in there, the, the kind of lean over, not allowing that vulnerable part of the body closer to the person that he's speaking to. You know, often that can show a sense of not being confident with the, with the people. These are interesting observations, but is there any science behind them? Well, it's basic neuroscience and it, uh, evolutionary based. Look, we've got a part of our brain which is 400 million years old, started off with fish, reptiles have it, it's the fight and flight system. You know, it, it senses danger, whether we're going to attack or run away. Outside of that, you've got the limbic system, the emotional brain. Apes have got that as well. And like apes, humans once communicated without words. So we communicated by showing each other body and showing sound. So, for example, if I don't think you're a threat to me, I might show you my stomach area. I might show you not to attack me because I've got spiky things on the side of my body, a bit like a lizard would. I might show you my throat, yeah, because I don't think you're going to attack me at all. Well, now this looks uh, very kind of condescending and aloof, yeah, but originally it comes from I don't think you're going to attack me at all. I think I'm bigger and stronger than you. Regular morning greeting with the camera. Have you had your coffee yet? <laughs> so whether they know it or not, our highly evolved politicians are using much more than words in their political attacks. It's a really difficult balancing act for a politician, being warm and at the same time uh, powerful enough. So you're not going to show too much aggression. Politicians looking to get that balance just right could do a lot worse than heeding some advice from mum. Number one, stand up straight. Number two, look people in the eye when speaking. Always, keep your hands out of your pockets. Just stuck them in my pockets like uh, 
this, but of course then you see me crunching at my stomach and you don't know what my hands are doing in my pockets and it's very difficult for you to trust what I'm saying now because I'm concealing lots of physical information from you. So you kind of feel like I'm concealing verbal information from you. I mean, how much do you trust me now? All right, so I've learned I've got to really sit up straight, Jay. <laughs>